Right, welcome to episode two of uh, Rambling Achieved, and welcome back. Um, Dude. yeah, the direct. We just obviously finished watching it. Um, I think it could have been better, to be honest. It was fairly light. No surprise Yeah. drops this year. Um, and as you, because you said before, we obviously switched this on. We kind of knew a lot of it that was going in. So they haven't really shown Yeah. much. What What would you say before? Well, we're already off on a side tangent here. Before we get through the introduction, but what would you say for the the uh, what what score would you give it? Like a one to ten rating? What what score would you put down for the direct? I <laughs> I don't think it was like bad per se, because No. it's these are games that I'm sure are going to be good when they come out. But um, yeah, I think with them setting last year that Hi-Fi Rush, just dropping it like that. everyone was expecting that was like one of the big things whenever you see anyone talking about it well they're gonna surprise drop are they gonna and they just didn't so um, i'd say it was like a seven like a Yep. is a, de a decent but not not as good as i would have hoped i guess I, I was right there with the seven as well. I'll go seven point five just to mix it up a little bit. I, there's some things I'm I'm definitely positive on. I think the and and I guess we can go ahead and carry over into this uh direct discussion or review. I whenever they did the visions of mana, you know, they kind of they it, it felt like that was going to lead Mm. into I thought something that, yeah, that was. I thought you that know, was surprising. going to be like, yeah, available now. I mean, that's Right. an incredible get, but yeah, that's obviously, I think that's like my fourth page. So we'll come back to that because Yeah. that is a And really good get for them. for sure. And from, from a business perspective, especially, you know, just solidifying their place in Japan a little bit more. Hmm. And uh, yeah, that, that was a good get, but I was thinking like, Ooh, is this double fine? Ooh, is this clockwork revolution South of midnight? Are we going to get some information on, on one of these games that, you know, weren't announced for 2024, but now they're going to be slated into that window. I was just, I, once again, like you said, hi-fi rush just set the bar so high for surprise reveal, shadow drop, whatever you want to call it. That I was like, Oh man, what, what is this going to be? But you know, visions and visions of mana look great. And like you said, we'll get to that in a bit, but yeah. Yeah. All right, so obviously beginning off the showcase was avowed, starting off fairly strong. Um what I wrote down was like the combat looks good. Um from a magic perspective is what I felt like. That melee combat kind of looked a little bit iffy. It did. It looked a little stiff. I, I I felt that same way. I was like, ooh, that melee combat looks a little bit stiff. I thought the shooting looked pretty good. I thought the shooting in, in the Outer Worlds was really good. So Yep. yeah, I, I felt the same way. The magic looked okay, but the, the melee combat I was like, huh, huh. <laughs> Yeah. Because even like Bethesda hasn't really got melee combat right in their games. I've never felt like Skyrim felt like you were just. There wasn't. There's no impact at all when you're hitting. The outer world had a little bit more impact, but still, it just. They don't really know how to get it done, but. As long as like the effects of the spells were nice and stuff like that, but being able to freeze them and then shatter them, so that's that's a nice combination of stuff, and that obviously links into what I wrote down next, which was like nice effects of that, like the shattering, Yeah. and even even the lip sync. That's something that um, did you play Wasteland three? Uh, th no, I haven't yet. I got it on my Ah, backlog. I'm definitely going to get to that. oh. like the. The lip sync in that game and the the cinematic cameras for what it was was good, and it's good to see them bringing that forward as well. Um, Wasteland 3 was in exile, right? yeah, but that's what I mean. Under the umbrella of Xbox, it seems like they've Oh, they got oh, a nice bit of quality going um, Oh, oh, okay. I see what across you're saying. the board. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're cutting corners as much as like one might expect. Yeah, it's it's interesting how outer worldsy this felt to me, you know, from and I'm not I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but like I, I agree the lip sync didn't look awful, but I, I thought the character models were not. much of a step up at all from the outer worlds. And I could just have sort of like rose tinted glasses thinking back to the outer worlds, but I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel to me, the world building, the world shots, the scenery, the environments, the color palettes, like the, the vibrant nature of that world that looked next Jenny to me, but the characters didn't look next Jenny to me. Mm. Yeah, I don't think they're really pushing for a next gen. Um, 
thing. It kind of how to put it in in Pillars of Eternity when you'd have your characters that were in your party, they had these little portraits to show that who was in it, and it kind of, they they looked very similar to that. So it's, mm. it's the style that they're going for. Okay, so it's um, a style choice. It's like an art style, yeah, because it, okay. it definitely looked like how one of them portraits would look. So if I it was brought to, yeah, okay, so yeah. if the portrait was kind of brought into mm. you know real time animation or whatever. Okay, I see what you're saying. So it's it that's a choice more than a yeah. uh, lack of ability to get this thing looking next gen. Because that because that was the thing where I was like. Looking at the world environments, it's like, damn, that looks way better than the outer worlds. And then I'm looking at the characters, I'm like, that looks very similar with like a, like you said, a slight pivot to just the the art direction in general. But I'm I'm glad to know that's the case for that. I mean, that's uh, that's me trying to make sense of it. Obviously, it's Obsidian. They work on a really tight thing, so they all of their games they end up cutting tons of stuff and features and having to gut certain things so maybe it's just that and they've had to scale that back let me but know what did... you thought about the uh the decision making did you, you saw where it had like the three choices i, I, I they seemed a I'm lot more they seemed a lot more um impressed themselves than i was they seemed to right. be like ah yeah you get to make a choice you get to go to this guy and, and it's like okay that's expected is it not like that's not really a feature you should be touting that's it's kind of expected it'd be like saying that you can aim down sight in a first person shoot <laughs> right right and and you know you see these static sort of discussions and then it's like I, it it feels kind of old to me but I will say the three options for the dialogue decisions that piqued my interest a little bit. Cause I was going, okay, so do each of these three lead down a different path? Because it's not, you know, you're not littered with 10 different choices that don't really have much of an effect other than like a slight chain reaction in the conversation that doesn't branch any further than that. This was, it felt like, okay, do all of these three lead you down a different path? road because that could add a bunch of fun replayability where you're not overrun with choices but the choices you do make actually matter so i was i was curious about the three and then i i could like you said we're fresh off of it i haven't rewatched that trailer but it felt like i only saw three and yeah from that decision yeah um yeah. it would it would make sense to me if they've if they've trimmed it down to that um because when you try and overdo it, obviously, then you have to accommodate for all of them consequences. So if you keep it to like a free consequence system for a lot of the things, I don't think people would be disappointed in that too much. Because even yeah. like you and me are huge fans of um, Alpha Protocol, which they did. And a lot of their stuff was just a four button system from each right. of the A, X, Y, B, whenever you right. choose stuff. I think that yeah. works perfectly. So, and and talk, talking about a game where choices really matter, like Alpha Protocol choices mm -hmm. really, really matter in that yeah. game. And having the limitation there, I think I actually aided that. Yeah, because it allows them to then focus on, okay, if there's only going to be these four outcomes, it's easier to then branch them out instead of being totally. like, oh, this one thing has eight outcome and then everything. Yeah. So I, I think that it's not a negative um what did you think about that date fall 2024 any confidence in that i i think it will yeah i think it will release i think there was one i can't remember what it was one of these i wrote down that isn't coming out this year i can't remember which one it is we'll get to it but yeah i think this will so, drop so fall i guess the cutout or the cutoff would probably be october you think of November and December as holiday months, so you would mm. consider those winter November to maybe February. You would consider the yeah. consider the winter period. So by October, you know we're sitting right here, right now, mid January. I mean that's that's a lot of time. So yeah, I think that we saw a decent chunk of gameplay the first time we saw it at the showcase. We saw a little bit more here, and of course, there's definitely some things that probably need some polish and then cleaned up. But I, I think that window that that's quite a few months out. I think that they, 
they should probably be able to hit that, I would hope. Yeah, and the only last thing I wanted to address was obviously I've been fairly critical about the art style um, and the direction of that. And it seems like upon watching that trailer and obviously taking a lot more time to show us things, it looks like it's going to be more reminiscent of how the setting in the second game was than the first game. Because mm. in the first game, it was very dark and fairly medieval fantasy and then in the second game they you were given a ship you could ex it was basically like caribbean islands and stuff like that so it was a lot more bright and beautiful so it seems like they're gonna go down that route which still disappoints me but hey you you wanted it to be a little bit darker in, yeah in but i'm i'm sure they, they have the data i'm sure probably more people enjoyed the second game setting wise okay. maybe Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. I wasn't like, if you would have asked me going into this event, what my hype level was for about, I would probably say somewhere eight out of 10. I don't think it's really changed one way or the other, maybe like a decimal point or two lower, but nothing, you know, nothing worth really uh, fucking acting like the roof is on fire. <laughs> it, it was just like, uh, character models, a little bit wonky. Some of the, some of the, the, you know, melee combat a little bit stiff, but yeah. like you said, over time, quite a few months polish, that stuff should come together. Yep. Right. Next up, uh, was Senua Saga. Yeah. Probably too. Um, the, the thing that I don't know if everybody caught it, but the, he mentioned it at the very beginning was it's going to be a short narrative experience. That's the first I don't thing know I wrote if anybody down. else really caught that because obviously they're showing you all these beautiful things and saying that that's going to be a shorter narrative experience is like, ooh. Considering how much hype they've been putting into this, I don't know if you're going to get away with another like four hour experience like that first game was. Did you see that it was digital only? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. And it's releasing at, I think, $44.99 or $49.99, a lower price point. Some weird things. Mm. Weird so you things. Can definitely tell us a shorter experience. I'm thinking it'll probably be whack. exactly. I'm thinking it'll probably be exactly around that five six hour window, like the last game. Mm. That's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I didn't catch catch that. I'm obviously looking down <laughs> to scribbling notes as fast as I can. It says, "Well, it's good. We're both taking notes. You caught something I did. That's good." Well, we're we're like I said, we're fresh off the, the direct we're recording right after and so i while while we were getting set up i was just kind of scrolling twitter and i saw that and i was like oh my god so I, I jotted that down real quick that that is i think that's telling i i it, it's not it's coming to game pass yeah. i'm gonna play it i don't give a damn but i think that's telling for what we can expect i think go ahead anybody out there who's wanting god of war last of us whatever you ain't getting that you're getting a, a five, six hour experience, I would assume. And uh, hopefully the, the thing with me is the last of us two great game. It could have been seven hours and I would have been fine. Like I didn't need the, the extra 23. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I was a okay with seven. I was the same with an uncharted four though, as well. I felt that that was way too long of an experience in the end. A there's lot a of lot those of games. Fat, there's a lot of fat on the games that doesn't need to be them. But that doesn't take it. They're still great games, of course. But, and yeah. the thing about Hellblade 2, with it being so specifically focused around a very specific style of story that's supposed to be hard-hitting, cerebral, like these stories are, are supposed to kind of mess with you. Mm. And if it lingered for 20 hours, like The Last yeah, of Us 2 is, is really... 100%. I think The Last of Us 2 is a perfect uh, example comparison because... That's the same style of storytelling that they're trying to evoke. And I think it lost a lot of its punch the longer it stayed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Wrote down, obviously, incredible visuals. Didn't really need to write that down. I think everybody can already see that. Um, the thing that I did write, it feels like it's taking a lot of inspiration from A Plague Tale. And I think from the first game of how it's going to be very short very cinematic and very to the point. Um, I don't know if yeah. you feel that way. I've said this before. I, 
this is going to, I'm already sounding so negative, but <laughs> I think if you want that, that top tier, top tier studio to make this style of game and give them a real budget. I mean, you saw it with Requiem, but I think expanding even beyond that, I think a Sobo is the team. No shade at Ninja Theory, but I think a Sobo has proven that they are the team for this style of game. Um, you know, we'll see what Hellblade 2 can deliver, but I thought Requiem was just on a on a different level, man. Plague Tale Requiem. And, and then Innocence is absolutely incredible as well. But you definitely see a lot of that 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 kind of carryover in vision for sure. Yeah, and I don't the thing that I also I don't think is gonna be as big of a jump as Innocence was the Requiem. I think this is gonna be more of a Innocence than a Requiem release for a Senua's Saga. I think it's going to be a lot more toned back and very restricted. As they said, short and narrative experience. I think that's where I was trying to go and my brain just started wandering off. <laughs> the, the, exactly what you said is that when you look at Innocence to Requiem and the leap there, with obviously Microsoft had some part in funding that i would assume with it with the the game pass deal i would assume they got paid pretty a pretty penny to get that there day one but imagine that team under microsoft fully with a with a real budget to from scratch in development to be able to say okay here 200 mil 150 mil what, what could that team be able to do because i would i would be willing to bet they weren't given 40 50 mil for for requiem and we're able to create that 20 plus hour, just ultimate mm -hmm. cinematic masterpiece. Yeah. Wild man. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, the, the combat looks a little bit better than what we probably gave it credit for. It looks a little bit more visceral, but it still has that camera angle of where it locks on and she takes up a lot of the screen and it feels very, I don't know how you'd put it. Because the first game, it felt very on railsy almost, where it was very restricted mm. and very locked in. There wasn't much in the way of being able to move the character and still fight. It was very, yeah. I agree. I, the only thing that kind of strayed away from that was it wasn't even with this trailer. It was the one before at the Game Awards where she dodged the projectile. That was the only thing where I was like, wow, that looks a little bit more dynamic in terms of your movement, you know, where, where, where you're able to move and, and how you're able to kind of bob and weave out of combat. That was, the that only was thing just I like saw. an, an in-game cinematic kind of thing, like an on rails. Or do you think that that was actually combat? I would assume you're probably correct that it, it would be more of an on rail segment, just in the same way, you know, when you're dodging hmm. and uh, in the first game and then how you can kind of, it, it looks so nice and cinematic, but it is a pretty kind of QTE based system. Yeah. And I would assume that was probably a, a similar thing with the projectiles. But I, I will say, even if it is that, if it's a frequent, like reoccurring theme in combat where you, you, you still have your parries, you still have your kind of evasive maneuvers, but then you also have projectiles that you're dodging in combat, just adding a little bit more, I think would go a long way in making that experience feel fresh from a moment to moment basis. Yeah, I'm hoping the combat has a lot more depth than the first game. Because like I said, that was one of the many things that drove me away from actually not bothering to finish it. It was just a very... Boring. Uh, I don't want to say lackluster, but yeah, it was it was boring in the end. I was I stuck with it. Yeah, there's um, no other way to put it. It was just boring. They seemed very pleased about the, the audio side of the game of saying that the voices in a head in the first game were obviously affected by headphones. So you could hear them like behind you and everything. And they've said that they've decided to try and utilize that for a lot more segments in the game. Even the music and stuff will be affected by it. So that'd be interesting. I don't know. Do you play with headphones or are you? I usually just turn my damn TV up real loud, <laughs> <laughs> I, but, but there are certain games where I'll, I, I need to get a good pair of headphones, but there are certain games where like um, Hellblade one, I played with headphones. I'll play those style of games with headphones, but if I have, you know, my preference, I just turn my damn TV up real loud. But I, I you know, even when you're seeing the two voice actors, 
they're gathered around the microphone and they're kind of like circling yeah. around it to re I mean they're they're going all in so that's mm. one of those games with the you know the the spatial audio and all that you you definitely want to grab a good pair of headphones and I mean I, I we we'd seen the updates to their uh motion capture studio but to see the scale of that studio yeah the thing the thing that really caught me with that was just wondering where they're going to be putting that to use going forward if this is going to be a smaller scale experience and also I, I don't mean to keep harping on this but it took from 20 when did hellblade one come out 2017 yeah about that time man to 2024 to get out a six seven hour game like does that not seem kind of crazy um I think seven years? Yeah, it is a little bit long, but when you see it's it's maybe not as uncommon as you'd think for something so like how to put it, like artsy and stuff. The way because you have when people have these grand visions and stuff like the the person I can't remember who the name of the like the director of the game was. Seems very passionate about it. Uh I, I yeah, I know uh, you're talking about I see his face. End, yeah, when he did the speech at the end and everything, um so these type of like projects can have huge amounts scrapped from it because you think, oh no, that's not good enough. This needs to be better, better, better. So I can see, and that's what I mean. This is what Xbox has fallen in a trap of. They allow them a lot of this freedom, but this is what happens. Your turnover rate of games is going to be very, very long because if you're just going to give them, you know, the Hideo Kojima thing of you know, do what you want, you know, there's no limit. This is what happens. It just gets away from you. Obsidian falls prey to that a lot of the time. You sometimes you need to reel it in a bit. Because yeah. yeah, seven years for an experience that's probably going to be looking like a five-hour, a one-and-done thing as well. You think it's it's a good game to have on Game Pass, but I doubt people are going to replay it. Right. Yeah. Listen, I I don't mean to sound so doom and gloom because I I don't feel that way. I don't think you feel that way either. I don't want to give that impression out. No. But but you know, I don't. That's kind of the thing too, and and we we never really talked about this. But you're you've been in the. How old are you now? Twenty five. Okay, so you've been in the Xbox ecosystem since what two thousand and six or so. I think on the profile it shows you how long you've had um live. I think it's like thirteen years. So at least oh, okay. thirteen years. So. And and I'm kind of new to the ecosystem, but throughout all the time I've known you, is as invested as you are into the Xbox ecosystem. You've never been a bootlicker, you know what I mean. You've <laughs> always been critical of of things yeah. when it's yeah. reasonable to be critical. And I don't think that this show, in general, like we said, seven seven five. I don't think it's a oh we're we're gonna have an overly negative lens that we're looking at this show from. Yeah. But there are things to be kind of mindful of. Just the fact that. So is this the cadence that we can expect from Ninja Theory? We were another seven years after this one. Like there, there is something to take away and just kind of garner from the the cadence of release for some of these teams, specifically with Ninja Theory. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I'm excited for the game. I'm sure you're excited for the game as well. Um, but it's also about giving constructive criticism and your opinion on it and if you, we obviously have these worries because it's only just now leading in with xbox that they're finally picking up steam and that's just not good enough it really isn't and if and that's what the worry is if you keep giving these turnover lengths you you will just keep losing these quote-unquote generations because you're just too slow at putting out products and that's just the yeah. truth of it you know what? You made a really good point. I'm gonna, I'm jotting down this note right here. After we finish this segment, I want to get your thoughts on Xbox in 2024 in general, because I think that's a good kind of carryover conversation from this. So, um, but yeah, May 21st, 2024, yeah. a locked in specific date for Hellblade. What do you think about that? That's that's, that's interesting. The, that's not getting delayed. That is, they've given that date. It's that sentence then. I think they've yeah. given them enough time. They're like, look, uh, even if it's not ready, you guys just need to get this out the door now. We need something yeah. early on in the year that's from us. Get it out. You want me to tell you? You want me to tell you the thing that I found a little bit interesting about that date? That's before the June showcase. Oh. So, I, I 
and that kind of carries over to our thoughts on Xbox in 2024, but do we get something at that June showcase that is a brand new announcement that releases this year? Like I, it, it could be possible. Could be. I'm, I'm just saying, we'll, we'll kind of save that, but it could uh, be. Uh, I will quickly dip into that. I think what's more likely to happen is like a, the game that we're about to mention next, uh, like a visions of mana kind of thing. I don't think it'll be anything from themselves. They'll probably partner with somebody to be like, here goes another heavy hitter. Right. So perfect segue. Obviously a huge get for Xbox. The first mana game. A massive series from Square Enix. And the it seems like it's going to be coming in tw- uh, summer of this year. So. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, I've never played a Manic. I don't know. Have you dipped your no. toe in any of them? No, I've I'm, I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump into this damn thing. Like yeah. that looks great to me. The the emphasis on platforming and like the collectathon nature. Hell yeah, dude! It it looks so much more fun than just like a hack and slash, repetitive, grindy. It looks like it looks like it's really embracing the the fun even with the the color palettes on offer for the 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 mm. you know vibrant worlds that you're seeing like it just looks so delightful yeah like you said the combat looks fluid vibrant and colorful art style of the world um the mount was kind of interesting as well because it seemed yes, to it was. It, it, the thing that annoys a lot of people is random encounters and then being dragged into a battle the best thing that you can have in a JRPG is a traversal like a vehicle that just says, get the hell out of my way. <laughs> I want to go from point A to point B. And he was just smashing 100. through him. That's great. Absolutely great. I agree. 100%. Yeah. When I saw that little puppy horse <laughs> thing, I was like, oh yeah, man, we're going to, we're going to be cruising around these beautiful worlds with our little, our little puppy dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Yeah, they mentioned about the adaptive music, which I thought was interesting, because that's something that doesn't really get talked about enough, but JRPGs really fall prey to having music tracks that just drone on and on and on. And they have a very small amount of tracks, and they don't really shift it up. And then, you know, you have a battle encounter, battle encounter, and you're hearing these same tracks over and over again. So to have a music system that at least he said it was like adaptive. So when you get into the combat, it then kicks up more and will be more aggressive and stuff like that. That was interesting to me. Yeah, that's super sick from from just a audio design perspective. I, I'm excited for this. I'm I'm like legitimately excited for this. I don't know where I would put it on my most anticipated list, but it really climbed with this trailer significantly. Yeah, and a series I never thought was going to make a debut on Xbox. It, it did kind of hurt, though, because I was like, oh, Square Enix, finally getting that Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7 remake. And then it was like, yep. no, and I was like, ah, okay, yeah. Square, I, I understand, you hate me, I get it. <laughs> I think that was my first thought, too, when I saw that logo, I was like, Oh no, is it happening? And that's the thing. It's all these damn rumors. I'll scroll through Twitter and see it's it's Final Fantasy VII. It's, 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 it's everybody just talking out the side of their head. But it it was that that was the first thing that came to my mind. I can't lie. So there is that deflated feeling. But yeah. by the time I, listen, I'm not trying to be sacrilegious here. I'll say this: that gameplay looks more fun to me than Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. To me personally, like that just looks more jolly, kind of jump in, have a good time. Yeah. I'm not saying it would be a better yeah. game, but it just yeah. looks like more fun, like fun per minute. That looks f- more fun per minute, in my opinion, from what we've seen so far. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely pumped. I'm excited to give it a go. And hopefully it will be a series that they can then pull the previous titles because that really bugs me. Is yeah. when Xbox finally gets a, a a title and it's like, yeah, you have like the eighth game in the series, and it's like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Please. Yeah, I hope so, it's yeah. not too tied to the lore and all that. I hope we can kind of just jump in and have a good time, not really have to. Yeah, JRPGs have a have a tendency for allowing you to just jump in. You don't really need to know, even like Yakuza and stuff. Yeah, they have branching points that connect, but you can 
digest each game individually however you'd want really and then that is a summer 2024 release for, I'll be um, there. visions of mana and then the next on the list that they showed us was the ara game ara yeah you say history untold i think do you know what you you mentioned it um if i'd heard of it and stuff and if i was excited for it, i think in the draft and i yep. think i said no and that's because I hadn't heard or seen anything about it. It just slipped under my radar. I will say I am a big fan of like 4X strategy games. So this does do something for me because I'm a big fan of Civ. I'm a big fan of like Stellaris, Crusader Kings and stuff. So it does right. look interesting. I'm not sure if you're going to have much to say on it because you said you weren't. Yeah, really I don't have interested. anything. Um, it's fall 2024. So another. <laughs> there you go. There's your, <laughs> there's your bit. <laughs> I mean, but I, just in terms of the Xbox landscape, like, I, you know, say what you will about the game, re- regardless of who's going to be there, who's hyped for it, who's not. I, regardless of all that, diversity of game style and game experience for 2024 is looking pretty damn stacked. Yeah, and that's something that they have. You got to give them credit for consistently delivering with Game Pass is that there's always something for somebody. Like, even these in between games like Pentiment and stuff like that. They're giving you totally. something that you're not going to get on PlayStation from their first party studio. You don't see PlayStation doing these little smaller titles. I can't even think of has PlayStation done a strategy game? I don't think they've Oh in god, a very, no, not very from a first time. party. I, like, yeah, I don't think from a first party standpoint ever if I'm not mistaken. And you got Microsoft out here being like, here's Age of Empires, here's Halo Wars, here's, here's this now, and stuff like that. And they're yeah. all different types, which is nice of strategy game. It's not just the same stuff. But yeah, what I wrote down is it with them being previous developers of Civ, it looks very reminiscent of Civilization. Um, something that is nice is that the world adapts over time and era. So when you're building and you get more modern it then changes with the time, which is nice. That's always a good good little thing for these types of games. Um, something that may be helping to be a little bit more digestible for people who don't do the strategy games is their way of handling the how people take turns and stuff like that. How you're all doing your turns at the same time, you will then obviously end your turn and then it will go to the next turn instead of how Civ usually works, which is you're sitting there waiting with AI to take its turn and it, it can, yeah, it can uh, drive people away and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. The, yeah uh, the animal system was kind of interesting as well of how it attacks villages. Cause that kind of reminded me of, um, Oh, what is it called? Age of empires as well. How you have to, you, you have your villages that hunt and stuff like that. So that was interesting. And then, yeah, it's just going to be a full, 2024 release like you said yeah i mean listen it, it looked it looked competent you know <laughs> like I, I i don't know how to add great commentary because <laughs> i don't play these games but it looked like it was doing what it was supposed to do for that genre yeah it looked a little bit safe a oh, little really? bit too safe um all of this the ui systems looked very pulled from Civ and stuff like that so mm. but you know we enjoy and that's types of games so that's fall 2024, yep. and then we also had Avowed, which is fall 2024, which obviously those two aren't going to can- cannibalize each other at no. all, but looking like a pretty good fall 2024, as well as Indie, which I would assume would be after that as like the final game of 2024, but uh, what you thinking? That's what I wrote now. I think that's getting pushed. I don't see that coming out this year. All right. You want to move on to that? Yeah, that was obviously the final game that they showed in the showcase um before we obviously get to that of me thinking it'll be delayed first person kind of knew it kind of knew it i didn't think machine had it in them to create the entire game in third person and i think think... so the combat looks good Um, it does you've literally just come off of playing wolfenstein so the combat in that is nice uh it's all going to depend on how well 
they handle the mission structures and stuff like that, but they, they tend to do stealth pretty well in that game, giving you nice varied options, crawling through vents and stuff like that. So I think they can pull it off. It it was a major blow to me to see it in first, because like that that whole thing of, oh, well, you'll be able to explore and traverse through these worlds in third person. All right. Let, we'll see. We'll, we'll see to what degree you're able to do that. I think this is going to be a predominantly first person game. Predominantly yeah. first person yeah. game. All and, the cutscenes will be in third. And I of course, it's just going to be the from A to B scenario of like when you shimmy for a wall, you're climbing up a pipe, you're yeah. doing your little swinging rope down, it's all going to be, and then yeah, everything else will be first. And I wonder, even in those segments, how much control of the of the character do you really have? You know what I mean? I doubt it's going to be much at all. But yeah. I'll, I'll say this. The melee hand-to-hand combat, the punching, mm-hmm. that looked really good in first person. Like, I will say that might have been the best first person hand-to-hand combat, like straight up fist fighting, that I've ever seen. That was amazing. Wow, high looking. Price. It is, but at the same time, if you look at the competition... There's not a lot of great first person just hand to hand fist fighting. Like if you look at Cyberpunk, that was pretty good. Not great. Um he, he, there's a couple other examples, Starfield kind of, but not good really at all. Um, yeah, I think the only thing that'd be on par, maybe a little bit better, was Kingdom Comes. First person. Okay. I, I still need to get around to that. And that yeah. is that is that hand to hand like fist fighting or is that yeah. sword play? Well, that's both. You can do anything. Okay, Bows. cool swords yeah it's a lot so i'll I'll say that the the hand-to-hand first person combat looked really really good the section where you're jumping from plane to plane in first person that looked phenomenal the section where indiana jones he uh he has his arm he's like trying to solve a puzzle and the Mm. spider comes crawling onto his arm in first person that i can see how that would add to the immersive experience 100 but this is your first licensed character (laughs) for the platform and you're barely going to see the dude that's crazy that that is xbox in a nutshell like i said they don't play it by common rules before they they Yeah. yeah it's madness and and i get it i get it you don't want to be uncharted you don't want to be tomb raider but those games exist because of indiana jones's existence Mm, exactly like you're not copying anything. They copied you. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's crazy to me. I I'm gonna play it. I'm like you said. I just played Wolfenstein for the first time, and I unbelievable storytelling. Some of the best cinematic cutscenes still to this day on offer in that game. One of the best stories in a first person shooter that I've ever really played. Um, that game is incredible. So I'm down to experience it. But man, a massive blow seeing that it's going to be majority. Uh, first person and and you know i understand that that's a team their pedigree is in first person combat but you look at gorilla from the switch from kill zone to horizon excellent transition there mm-hmm. there have been studios who have made this switch before uh, you look at um playground going from a racing game to to making fable like studios can make these transitions and i don't know i, I would just I, I am a little bit bummed that it, they're, um. they're not doing more in the third person realm do you know what I will add to that? I think it's also because who's directing it? It's Todd Howard. It's Todd yeah. Howard's little passion project. He's obviously not. He's head of the first the game studios. So it feels kind of like they were like, well, we definitely can't do this. You can't make a Bethesda style RPG of Indiana Jones. Right. That'd be tragic. That'd be yeah. So he he's gone and looked around, and it's like, oh, we only really have these teams available will kind of punt it with Wolfenstein and it, it feels this this is obviously a joke but it feels like they've gone well they've killed Nazis before let's give it to them right <laughs> I was thinking the they same know, thing they know how to make a good Nazi villain that would be perfect there you go yeah and yeah, yeah, listen bizarre. I think that was regardless of my wish for it to be in third person that was hands down the best looking game of the show, in my opinion. That looked 
really, really good. Like really, really good. So despite me wishing it was in third person, I'm still going to play the hell out of that thing in first person. And, and I'm totally open because if they can make a story that's 75% as good as what I just played with Wolfenstein, yeah, you got a game. I, think the, other, I think the story is going to be uh, falling flat. They, like I said, I think I mentioned to you the only just don't touch young blood. That's just tragic. I don't know what the yeah. hell happened with that game. Everything else that they've put out um, since New Order has been exceptional. I here's what I'll say to the the like I want to really reiterate how good that game is. If that game came out in 2023, that would be in my top five games of 2023. That is. An incredible, incredible video game. So I'm giving them all the 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 faith in the world, all the opportunity in the world mm-hmm. to blow me away with this. I, I'm gonna go in open minded, but in the back of my mind, at all times, I'm gonna be going, damn, I really do wish that I was whipping this dude in third person. <laughs> I really do wish I was shooting this dude in third person, but we'll see. And 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 yeah, it looked good. Chronicles of Riddick, they did the thing where they swap between first and third, and there have been games that have pulled uh, yeah. it off before. Yeah, that's a so good we'll shout. See. That wasn't too bad melee combat either for its time, especially right. as well. Really good. Good stealth. Good. Just a great video game. Really surprising. Like license game in that era that just came out was like, wow, that's incredible. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Right. That was the showcase wrapped up. I don't think there was anything else shown there other than at the very end of that Indiana Jones showcase. I don't know if you caught Todd Howard stealing the golden thing in the background. I was like, okay, this. Was straight. I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. That's awesome. So yeah. let me let me carry you over into w- what I was thinking. I wrote down every uh, I think every exclusive Xbox title coming in 2024. And we have Towerborn, Flight Sim, Aura, Hellblade 2, Indiana Jones, Avowed, and Stalker 2, which Three month exclusivity window, but still exclusive for a little bit. It, I might be forgetting something, but I think those are kind of the big seven. Seven exclusive games for mm-hmm. Xbox in 2024 that we know about right now. I would say Hellblade 2, Indie, Avowed are all like must play games. That's a f- Freaking great lineup. And they're all first party. Every single one of those first party must play titles, at least in my opinion. That's a good 2024. What are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think it... I wouldn't get used to that kind of output. It does feel like a few of these have been pushed from previous years, so maybe this year is going to be a little bit more stacked. I'm saying that because I genuinely did think that they were going to shadow drop something. So I'm kind of like a little bit skeptical that they can keep this output going because they didn't shadow drop so it feels like yeah but that that's a good a good lineup for this year especially when you look at how supposedly light Sony's year is going to be in comparison Very this is going to be their year to finally maybe start clawing back some sales yeah very very light from a first party standpoint and that's the thing, Sony, they're they're so good at picking out those third-party partners, man. And so we'll see with Rise of the Ronin, Pacific Drive, and Final Fantasy VII. We know Final Fantasy VII will be a huge hit, but yeah. the others we'll see. Um, I want to ask you one more thing. Is that at that, at that you know, you, you were talking about Indiana Jones and thinking it would slip out of 2024. You 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 believe it won't hit 2024? It'll slip into 2025? The only reason I say that is because all the rest of these things that had been announced had either obviously a set in date with Hellblade or they were at least giving like holiday windows um as to when they would drop. And considering this is really the first time we're seeing Indiana Jones gameplay. And they didn't give it like a, here's a holiday drop. Here's a summer. I, I don't see it coming this year. I'd be very surprised. So let me ask you, Hellblade 2, 
and avowed. Th- those would be the two left as like I would say the marquee titles mm. if indie slipped. So Hellblade 2 avowed, okay? And then we we have Towerborn Flight Sim, Aura, and Stalker 2. You think that's a I would still say that's a good enough 2024 to keep the fans like yeah, satiated. Yeah. 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 I think that's a solid like B plus or maybe not B plus, but like a solid B year, even without Indiana Jones. And if Indiana Jones yeah. comes out, you're talking one of the best years maybe ever for Xbox. If it's really good. Yeah. Definitely this people, generation. A lot of people have been throwing that around. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's hard because you think of all the golden years of even just like when Halo Three dropped and stuff, how impactful that was, and how ingrained that is in people's heads. Yeah, and that was two thousand and seven, if I'm not mistaken. You also had Mass Effect that was exclusive. You had it was Bioshock 07 as well. Mm. That that probably would be the best year ever. Um, but hey, I mean to even be considering. Yeah. No. Ex- absolutely. Ex- yeah. yeah, Xbox and best year ever in the same <laughs> sentence. Wasn't after the we'd Xbox, be saying that for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, after that, that the the uh, the Magic era, the the Xbox One era, where mm. it seems the page has definitely turned. Um, so it, it's exciting times, no doubt about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, that that was all I had on the thoughts for Xbox 2024. I'm thinking it's it's looking like a pretty good year. I did have one little game that I jotted down. Okay. Uh, what time is it? Four, oh, yeah, we got 40 minutes. You want to run through this real quick? Yeah, sure. Why not? So before the show, I, I was I was thinking about some some little I, I like throwing little games into podcasts. I think that's like the best, the most fun thing about doing a podcast with somebody is like tossing out a game idea and, and bouncing back and forth. Um, so I came up with the predictions over and under uh, uh, event game, <laughs> whatever the hell we're doing here. So I jotted down 20 games and I picked a score, like a, an open critic score that we're going to be predicting. Will this game be over or under that aggregate review score at the end of the year? And, uh, so we'll just kind of uh, we'll we'll throw out one for a quick example so people can easily kind of digest it. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I have eighty nine. Will it be over or under eighty nine? And the reason I picked eighty nine was because part one is at an eighty eight on Open Critic. Eighty nine, over or under? I think it'll get ninety. So I'll 90. go over. All right, locking you in at an over. I'm going to say I'm going to say exact. I that I know that's that's already <laughs> cheating at your breaking, own game already. <laughs> breaking the breaking the rules of my own game here, but which makes it kind of even harder cuz I don't have any range there, but I I feel like it's going to be just like that one little point above above uh remake part 1. So I'm going to say exactly in 89. My reasoning as well why I think it'll be a little bit higher is because at a PlayStation having such a weaker year, I think it will be mm. something where they grasp it and be like, hmm. even if it isn't better, if a lot of people don't think because they only have really that and a few other games coming out, I think it will get received a lot better. Yeah, I, I actually, that, that does make some sense. And supposedly, you know what? I actually, I'm going over with you as well because Supposedly, this is like the big expansion where the the world starts to open up and you're able to traverse a little bit more and explore a little bit more, which could be a positive or a negative, but it's supposed to be like much, much bigger. So I'm going to go over as well. We'll both go over for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The second game I had jotted down is Dragon's Dogma 2, and I have an 84. Over and under 84, the reason I went with 84 is the first game is an 80, but... Uh, or Dark Arisen is an 80, but Capcom's been so hot for, for so long, since 2017, just non-stop hit factory. So I, I bumped it up a couple points. Just out of curiosity, oh. I don't know if you know it, is that the Dark Arisen that released on 360? Or is this the re-release? I think that the was re-release. Just... Oh, that surprises could... me that even that was that low. I can pull it up real quick. Um... 
I mean, it's got to be higher than an 84, surely. Because the reason it, it, it didn't sell so well in the first uh, release was uh, Skyrim cannibalized it entirely. Like It was within the a few-month windows of that. And okay. And it's releasing early, right, this year? It's like March. Yep, March. So it's not going to be anywhere near... A, I don't think a vowel will be near it. No. I, 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 I have to say it's got to be like an 85. Okay, so you're going over. Yeah. So I forgot with uh, with Open Critic, they combine all the scores. So it this is... This is accounting for, okay, no, 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 I'm wrong. This is for PS4, Xbox One, PC. So this is for the, it's an it, the darker is in the, you know, last gen version mm. is an eighty. So okay. you're going over, on, old dogma, okay, I, I'm gonna spice it up. I'm gonna go under just so just so we can. We can throw some flavor in there. I don't think it'll be much under an 84. I'm thinking like an 82, 83-ish. I could see it having some clunk on it, but I could also see reviewers being really forgiven for it, really forgiving yeah. for it because it's... Dragon's Dogma has just built up this like cult following that is... I mean, they seem like legit uh, ravenous for yeah. this sequel. So I could see you probably being right on the over, but I'm going to go under. Now let's move on to infinite wealth. I have it at an 88 over and over or under an 88. The previous game, uh, you know, uh, the, the, like a dragon was an 86. Ooh, do you know, that's probably hard. That's really hard. I've got it pre-ordered as well. So I feel a little bit more attached to this, um, invested. Ah. Uh... It was really well received and kind of like blew people away that they were able to get away with shifting the combat in the way that they did. With it being set in like America now as well for a huge portion of the game, it seems. Maybe one rating higher than what Like a Dragon got. Okay, so you're. Oh, okay, so Like a Dragon was an 86. Mm. I have infinite wealth at an 88. So do you think it'll be over or under an 88? I think it'll be 87. 87, so, so under. under. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go... I'm just the Debbie Downer today. I'm going to go <laughs> under as well. I, I think I, I think you're right. I think it's going to be like right there on the on that that range. But they're, they're adding in some weird elements like the farming and stuff. I wonder how people will take to, uh, to all yeah, that. Yeah, the only problem with that is... These games have extremely long intro sequences. So to get to mm. them other aspects of the game that say like somebody posts a video and then shows you a clip of, oh, there's this really wacky thing. And then it's like, well, you got to get through like eight hours right. to get to that point. It kind of, yeah. All right. So Tekken 8, this is a really interesting one. Tekken, Tekken 7 was an 82. I figured that would be way lower. So I put Tekken 8 at an 86. Over or under an 86. Because I feel like it's got to be better than Tekken 7. You know? Yeah. I just wonder to what degree. Over or under an 86. I'm going to go under again. I think it'll be like an 85. Okay. Okay. But then you know this what, is man? coming from somebody who is absolutely woeful at fighting games and only I... plays them on like the easiest difficulty. <laughs> I'm going to go over on this. I think there's like this weird fighting game renaissance that we're starting to see mm. take place in the industry with MK1 last year and then uh, Street Fighter 6, it was like a 92. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, oof. I'm going to go over, but that would mean it has to be an 87 or higher, which is putting it into like unprecedented territory. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go over. I mean, you for, said, for you said Street eight. Fighter was 92. I think a 92. Incredible. Which that is in and of itself unprecedented territory. I don't think there's many fighting games that are on no. that, at least like modern fighting games, yeah. nothing even close to that. Next one that I have here. 
carrying over right from the direct, we saw Avowed. We had some mixed thoughts and feelings on Avowed. Outer Worlds was an 83 on Open Critic. I'm going to carry that straight over. Will Avowed be an 83 over or under an 83? I mean, I'm going to pull your cheat card and say it's going to be directly on it. Directly in, okay. Yeah. Because Obsidian has... Uh, they have a tendency for getting really low review scores. Like you said, like, are you... I, I didn't think... I think 83 is a little bit low for the Outer Worlds. I totally agree. A little agree. bit higher. The same with New Vegas. Like, it just... Maybe it's, like, buggy launches and stuff that heavily knock tons of points off of them. So if they can just get a smooth launch... Like, you're looking at, like, an 85, but... I, mm, it's obsidian. I, I'm going to say this. Before the show, I would have said over an 83. I think I got to go under after seeing that showcase. I don't the think it was that dragged. That yeah. Down. <laughs> I could see if that combat isn't like much better looking when it launches. I don't know, man. That that I, I'm really iffy about that combat, and, and you know, it, here's the thing: the combat could be a minor focus of the game. It could be a lot more exploration, dialogue. We know that's Obsidian's bread and butter, but that combat was iffy. Mm -hmm. And if people are going to be going in with melee builds and not relying as much on magic and shooting, yeah. and wanting a, a decent experience out of that melee combat, I could see that dragging it down a a good bit there because that melee did not look good in my opinion no, it didn't at all. At all. I wasn't impressed by it. So you're going exactly in 83. I'm going a little bit under. I don't think it'll be much. I think it'll be like, like an 81 for a mm. Next up, we have Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This is a really peculiar one. And I, I pulled some weird references here. Avengers from Square got a 68. <laughs> Arkham Knight from you know Rocksteady, their last real game, in 86. So I put the score at a 72. Will Suicide Squad kill the Justice League be over or under a 72? Sorry, could you remind me? What was Avengers again? 68. I'm going 69. Okay, so under. Okay. Like, I'd, I'd probably even a 68. Like, it's. There's so much negativity swirling around that they seem so out of touch with how to deal with the criticism and like, yeah, it just doesn't look good either. Constant live service rumors and you don't even know what it is. And that is exactly what it was leading up to Marvel Avengers. This exact right. same indecisiveness of not wanting to come out and being like, okay, guys, yeah, it's just going to be a grind fest. Totally. Either accept it or just, you know, don't try it. But they're just hush hush you're 100 percent right about the vague messaging mm -hmm. with this game they want to hide that so much um I, but despite that i'm gonna go over because i am gonna say there's enough story in there that people can avoid the live service stuff at least reviewers power through the main story and not pay as much attention to how grindy and monotonous the live service stuff is. Slap a score down and you know push it into that 73 range. I, I don't think that's hopeful. I think <laughs> that's yeah. very hopeful. I, I think after the game comes out and we have our hands on it, like just the general public, I think it's gonna get eviscerated. But I think that uh I think that reviewers will power through that main story and be like, hey, that's there's actually something okay there. Well, just out of curiosity, quick, what did Gotham Knights get? Dude, we're, we're, we're in sync. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I should have pulled up Gotham Knights. Because I think you finished it, didn't you? Yeah, I played like oh, 40 Jesus hours of it. Fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I, I finished wow. it. It's got to be in the 60s, right? 68, yeah. the exact same yeah. thing as the Avengers. You might be spot on. It might yeah. exactly hit 68. That's weird that that's the same number. That's really yeah, weird. People are just fed up of their crap, to be honest. They just they don't want this whole grind of fun thing. When you're playing a superhero game, you don't want this, oh, I'm picking up a, 
a bracer of mighty strength and stuff like as good as like ultimate alliance was and stuff you save that for that type of game an arpg you don't want yep. this brawler stuff like this is why arkham's trilogy was so damn good because it was you pick up his gadgets and stuff and it's just fixed there's none of this crappy gear score man. dude the fact that they're both 68, <laughs> that really makes me want to go, you know, I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to lock in over. There's a part of me that like, I don't want to see Rocksteady fall into the sixes. I don't know why that's so weird to me, but I really don't want to see that. I want to, I'm just like hoping that that story is moderately okay. Yeah. Well, have you, <laughs> have you seen the movies? Cause I didn't, uh, the movies were just okay to me. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Yeah. I didn't see the latest one. I saw the first one. I went in theaters and saw the first one. I I haven't really I haven't kept up with any of the superhero stuff since Endgame. I've just been like, yeah, I'll I'll watch. You know, if if they make a new Batman, I watch the new Batman. I'll watch oh, like the incredible. big stuff. Yeah, the the Pattinson Batman. It was it was mm. pretty good. It was. I, I'm just not as I'm not as into it as I as I was when whenever when the MCU. I was there. Every single movie I was at the theater watching every single one. And then after Endgame, I was like, I think I'm okay with I think I'm 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 good from, from here on out. So just to interject just one little thing. I think a lot of the stuff that they've put out has been crap. Other than the Guardians films, they're always just good. Yeah. Um I would heavily recommend though Loki. Because you seem to really enjoy control. It has a lot of elements that is kind of similar to how control oh, is. Wow. Yeah, because it has like a bureau thing going. Really, really good. Huh. Okay, I'll I'll jot that down. I'll I'll mm. give that a look. I still need to watch Guardians three as well. So I'll watch. I'll, I'll, there there will be a point where I want to kind of dip my toe back in. I'll definitely make. I'll put that on the list. But yeah. Other than that, I haven't really touched anything even myself. Well, speaking of uh, you know whimsical, lighthearted games, we'll go from Suicide Squad over to Hellblade two. Um, right there in the same exact tone, <laughs> appealing to the same audience. Hellblade One was an eighty-four. I jotted down an eighty-seven for Hellblade Two, over or under an eighty-seven. That is such that's such a difficult title because you know it's yeah. going to get knocked for it being so short, but artistically, it's going to get praise to heaven and back but then I, I look back and think like alan wake 2 got kind of burned by certain critics and stuff for it being way too artsy and stuff and people for not i don't know why people don't like remedy some people really just don't take a liking to their work that's actually a really good game to bring up here alan wake 2 alan wake 2 is an 89 so I think that's actually very, that's a good reference point to bring up. You said 87, right? Higher or lower? Higher or lower than an 87 for Hellblade 2. I think it'll get, yeah, it has to be higher. It has higher? to be higher. Yeah. Do you think it'll crack that, that, that elusive nine? No. Okay. I don't think it, I think the, the length of it, even though, like you said, it would be jarring to obviously have, psychosis for that long <laughs> um yeah i think it'll get hit in the review departments for being too short and stuff like that i 87 that's i'm giving myself a pat on the back here that's a good score to <laughs> to predict over or under probably to over or under an 87 i'm gonna go i'm gonna go higher i'm gonna go over I, th I think I'm with you. I, I I could almost see if this is just produced down to an inch of its life, but cleaned up totally. Maybe it could crack that nine range. I, I, I'm with you thinking more 88, 89, but I don't know. I'm going to go higher. Um, Black Myth Wukong. I think this is the first game from that developer, like the first big game. So I just jotted down an 80. I think that's a... That's a good kind of barometer for quality in 80. Will Black Myth Wukong be in that good camp? Would you be able to look... What was Lies of P? 
What did that Let's land see. us? Because that was one of the things where people were kind of like, eh, it's their first foray into something, and that was incredible. Like They showed everybody that, look, man, you have a vision, and you're willing to execute that. You got some good references here. Lies of P in 82. Man, that's a lot lower than I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. So what was the um, higher or lower of? 80. Four? Higher Black Myth Wukong, higher or lower than an higher. 80. Yeah. Higher. I think it will be very, very similar to Lies of P in reception. Nice. I, I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go lower on this one. I, I don't... I don't even know if I'm just being a uh, contrarian here and just picking the opposite <laughs> thing as you, but I, I just, I, it looks so good, but I just wonder when rubber meets the road, when we get our hands on it, does it feel as good as it looks? That's like the only, if it, if yeah. it can, if it can even be 75% as good as it looks in those trailers, then we're off to the races. It'll definitely be high or at least mid eights. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go lower. Yeah, and prettying it up kind of is a, is a dangerous game because oh, what the hell? What's the game? This just escaped me. What was the Team Ninja game? Oh, uh, what? Well, long. Yeah, that was a very pretty looking game. Day one game pass didn't didn't really stick with a lot of people. That's actually um, another good one. Even like the people who enjoyed Neo, a lot of people said it was a step down from Neo and Neo Two. Wolong was an 81. Those are two really good <laughs> reference points, an 82 and an 81. So if it can just be in that lane as good as those games, then, but that's, you know, for Lies of P, that seems like a pretty high bar with Wolong, maybe not as much, but weird mm. that it's only one point higher. Yeah. But hey, you're, you're going higher. I'm going lower for Black Myth Wukong. Next one, I have Metaphor Refantasio. And I, this is tough because Persona 5 was a 94. So it's like, and this is that team. And yeah. I, I, new IP, I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt with the score. So I went with a 90. Will Metaphor Refantasio be higher or lower than a 90? Okay. What was, could you look up Soul Hackers too? Yep. Because that was, um, because a lot of people in the Persona community are sick of Persona 5 constantly. Get, like, it's obviously had the Royal and then it's been released on Xbox. So it seems like they're really... And then the Tactica game. So they seem really set in stone. Of, well, what's, wow. is, it, is it really bad? Because I thought it was 70, fairly p poorly received. Yeah. 75. Yeah. Huh. Um... The the problem is is that Persona Five compared to Soul Hacker. So Soul Hackers Two is heavily heavily dungeon based in comparison okay. to Persona Five. Persona Five you have like the city and the social links and stuff like that. It's a lot more toned back in Soul Hackers. So if they go leaning more into Persona Five as a design choice, yeah, it definitely would hit like nineties and above. Because people are just rabid for them types of games. What was the... 90, flat 90. Higher or lower than a flat 90. Uh, 89. Yeah. I think it would just go... fall flat. Not fall flat, going... sorry, fall short. Right, fall one short. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go lower as well. I think it'll be somewhere in that high eight range, though. Uh, it's just, it's hard to follow, like... When you have such a big name as Persona, there just seems to be like if Final Fantasy Rebirth, if that exact same game came out and it wasn't, it didn't have Final Fantasy attached to the name, it wouldn't get the same scores. You know what I mean? Like hmm. it, there is just some sort of bias with fandom. Like I, even, even myself, you know, I could admit that um, certain things. I'm a huge, a, a new Mass Effect game that you could kind of say or Resident Evil is a perfect example for me because I'm just like, I, I can't see objective reality playing those games. I, I literally just can't. I'm thinking, oh, the story is in, it's incredible. I've been following yeah. all of them. Impeccable. But if you really, flawless. <laughs> yeah, but if you really look at the story, it's, it's nonsense. You know what I mean? So th there is something about fandom kind of blinding you. Mm. Um, so I, I, I wonder about that with Metaphor Refantasio not having that fandom on track. What do we have? 44? Okay, so... 
Let's rapid fire run through these last 10 here. Silent Hill 2 I got at an 83. The original was an 89 on Metacritic. 83 for the Bluebird. Will it be higher or lower than an 83? An 84. I think it'll get a little bit of warmth because it's Silent okay. Hill 2. But... And Bluebird. Why has it got to be a Bluebird of all people? <laughs> You know what, man? I'm going to go lower for... for. And you think they're going to drop the ball with it? I don't think they're going to drop the ball. I think that critics, in the same way that we just talked about there with the fandom, I think it is a double-edged sword yeah. where now it's it's not the same team. I think it can, I think this game is going to get picked apart, maybe even a little bit unfairly, um, just because it's not the same team. It's not, you know, they're going to make a little change here and it's going to be like, oh, that, that wall used to be yeah, gray and now yeah. it's light... No, that is exactly what happened with that HD remake. Something yeah. as simple as um, the, the font of one of the ranches or something was turned right. to Comic Sans and they went mental. The Silent Hill yeah. fandom's a little bit, they're a little bit <laughs> out there. <laughs> um, Metal Gear Solid 3, speaking in that same lane, Konami and, and mental fandoms, which I'm a fan of both franchises. I'm a little bit mental mm. myself, not, not throwing shots at anybody. Uh, 78 is what I have for the virtuous... Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. The OG was a 91. This is Virtua Studios' first big game, though. Um, so I, I went way, way, way down on this Gotta one. Gotta be higher. The source okay. material is so strong. Like Even if right. you mess it up, that's going to be like 83, 84 minimum. I, I might have went... I, I think I went too low on that one. I'm with you. I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go higher as well. It'll it'll be over in a 78. I don't know if it'll crack the eights, but it should be somewhere in that range. Um, the I don't next think it's gonna one, it's not gonna hit well though. I don't think. Um, I think it'll be higher yeah, than think, what the the thing was. I think people are gonna be disappointed. I think it's gonna be really restricted. I think it's gonna be one of those weird things where the conversation is gonna be mostly negative, but I think it'll be above a 78, which would all intents and purposes be a good game you know yep. it's just com being compared to something so beloved skull and bones 64 is what i have here for skull and bones over or under 64 hey man if games like avengers can soar as high as 68 <laughs> i'm sure skull and bones can hit the 68 so i'll go high. all right but i have played the beta and it is dreadful they is invited it? me to yeah, and then they lift like the NDA, and so it was terrible. It's an awful game. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I those last two scores, I kind of messed up on those. It'll be higher than a sixty-four. I don't know how much higher, but it'll be higher than a sixty-four. It won't. But be then a... people might want to be jokers and just completely shit on Ubisoft because it's, you know, I mean, they deserve it for a lot of stuff that they do. To be fair, especially. Putting Beyond Good and Evil 2 completely in the dark and then being like, no, this is our child, Skull and Bones. You you want to play this? Guys, come on, play it. It's really good. Yeah. There is a weird... I will, I do agree with you. There is like a weird kind of unfairness to Ubisoft in some regard where I look at like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, it's like a 71 or something like... I don't know. I mean, that that's better than a lot of games that are sitting around the 78, 79 range, but it, it is what it is. I mean, I would probably give it a, a 71, but I think there's a lot of games that get eights that deserve fucking sixes. But anyways, <laughs> moving on into similar range here, Vampire Bloodlines 2. The first one was only an 80. So I put down 75 for the new one with uh, Chinese Room, the, the Chinese Room as the, the new developer. Oh, come on, burn me again, vampires. You did it with Redfall. This has got to be higher. <laughs> higher. Sod it, you know. Come I'm on, like, go lower. It, like, give us that Dead Island 2 thing. Even if it gets critically, like, panned and people are like, meh, I don't like it. Like, as long as the fans enjoy it, like, please. Get yeah. a good vampire game. What about Banisher's Ghost of New Eden? I got that down as a 77. Higher or lower than a 77? Vampire was what, a 72. Yeah. Man, that's criminal. Yeah, 72 on Open Critic. 79, I think, was around okay, about higher. Yeah. I am the fucking bearer of bad news here. I'm going lower for <laughs> Banisher's Ghost of New Eden. I think there's this like weird 
once again, new IP just have been struggling lately. And I think 77, if, if it's a 75, I think it could be okay. But you look at Immortals of Avium, you look at Callisto Protocol, games that were fine enough, and they just, they, they're not doing well um, critically. You know what? Actually, I think that's a good... What is that's the like, That is protocol? a good point. Immortal, I've still got sealed. I bought it on like Black Friday sale and still haven't opened it. Oh, really? And how dare uh, you I'll... mention Callisto after what it did to me? That little Callisto's a 67. Game. All right, that's, that's 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 ridiculous. That's where people are just going with the flow and stuff. There's no way that's a 67 game. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that's a 67 at all. So I mean, I got Banisher's Ghost of New Eden at a 77. That's 10 points higher. And there is that that what what is Immortals of Avium sitting at? Because there it does seem to be that there's some weird new IP just or or if 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 they're not in like the 10 out of 10 range. Uh, or, or you know, nine out of ten range. It just seems like they flop. Yeah, man. No, 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 no. Immortals of Avium is a seventy-two. That game, I, I, Immortals of Avium to me is like close to an eight. I, I no, yeah. This is I, I'm 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 st I'm sticking with lower for Banisher's Ghost of New Eden for sure. I'll be the hopeful but, one. Uh, all right, it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do too. I'm definitely gonna be there day one. Don't, don't mm. you know? I, I've absolutely we'll be playing that on day one i'm really looking forward to it stalker 2 at an 80 first game was an 82 on metacritic stalker 2 80 higher or lower over or under an 80 i mean it's got to be better than the original game and right, i think it will, i think it'll get free praise from you know don't really need to even say what it you know what they've gone through if they yeah. can get it out and it actually function as well as like a Bethesda game. Like I'm sure it's going to be buggy. The original game was extremely buggy, but as long as it can even just capture some of that. I'm going to say exactly an 80. I think it sticks the landing exactly at an 80. So you're, you're going over. I'm going exact for Stalker 2. The next one that I have wrote down... I might have to change the number score. Actually, let's come up with a number score together for this one because we just saw it. Indiana Jones. Uh, machine, the the like you said earlier, Youngblood, that was a 67. And then, but here's the really, really weird thing, man. On the high end, we have New Order at an 81. Mm. Like the the thing that's always shocked me with like Bethesda publishing games and stuff like that where you have Prey, Dishonored, these Wolfenstein games, you always see them in bargain bins. Mm. They never hold their value. They're always them cheap games that you're like, you know, a, a year down the line you can pick it up for like five bucks. And it's insane because they're always held so highly in regard, but they also just don't review well either. Like, you think like what the new order achieved when it came out in what like 2013 that was incredible and you're only giving that an 81 that's insane that's baffling yeah. that would be like if that released this year that would be like an 88 87 yes i mean that that's like yeah it's close to a 9 for me probably mm. that's a great great video game so what do you think is an appropriate score for indiana jones to go over or under i i had down an 80 with New Order being an 81 and then Youngblood being a 67. But after what we just saw, I think we might need to go up a little bit. What was New Colossus, just out of curiosity, which was like their last big hit? Let's was see. that at least better than 81? New Colossus. Because I would hope so. That's not one to pull up. There we go. Wolfenstein 2, New Colossus. Ooh, oh, my God. God, 87. Yeah. Okay. So we yeah, good good I, call I, there. I think I think it will be in that. Because you, the thing is is what annoys me about these old scores as well is there was a lot less variation back in like 2013. They just gave like flat 7s, flat 8s and uh, stuff like that and that there was very they didn't like to go too far and give too much praise and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's got to be on par with that, or even so. You want to go? 
you want to go 85 for the over or under? Yeah. Pick pick rather it'll be Yeah. And higher I think or lower it'll than be over than that. Okay, you're going over. Yeah. I'm going to go under. Um I I I think I don't think it's fair, but I do think there's enough people like me who are going to go into it like, damn. I wish I was playing this in third person. <laughs> and that's not fair at all. That's not that that's the really tricky thing when working for a publication. Mm. Whenever you don't have a platform like this to just talk and you're writing it instead, but what you're thinking isn't really truly coming out in the writing. And so people who have just it's it's almost like a dishonest form of communication in some regard where we can talk to one another and I can tell you openly and honestly, I really wish it was. I really wish it was third person that impacted my enjoyment a little bit. Whereas in the review, you can't really write that down because then it, it immediately makes it seem like you are coming at it with a, a bias yeah. or coming at it from a negative slant, which you probably were. And I think that should be okay, but it's hard to do that for a publication opposed to how we're discussing games. Yeah. Because like you said, you're, you're still extremely excited for it. It's just, you would, it's like how people heard uh, resident evil seven incredible game a lot of people right just, some of them fans of resident evil were like man i'd rather it be third person but we know and stuff like that so yeah no i can get that well and i tell you this i i, I hate to out myself if re7 was third person i would have probably rated it point three decimal points higher you, you know what i mean <laughs> it's just like you people have their people have their bias but bias is a part of being a human yeah, you know, no, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a weird thing, but yeah. So you're going over an 85. I'm going under an 85 for Indiana Jones. I have a couple jotted down here. What do we add? Uh, we'll, we'll rapid fire through these next few star Wars outlaws. I have it in 82 odyssey was an 84 Valhalla was an 83 massive. The developer, they just put out avatar last year. And like we talked about, that was a 72, but I would assume that is Massive's B team and that this is like the big dogs. This the Ubisoft, I think they're putting yeah. everybody, everyone in the kitchen sink and the the damn everything on, on Star Wars Outlaws. So yeah. I have 82, over under an 82. I think over. Star Wars is on a decent hot streak at the moment as well, for the games at least. Going over. I this is my most my most anticipated game of the year. Critics do not like Ubisoft. They just don't. <laughs> um, I'm going to go over, though. I'm going to go over. I think the most likely scenario with this is it just doesn't come out. If, if that yeah, was in I the prediction. Yeah, I don't see it coming that, out, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So we're both going over. Over an 82 for Outlaws. And I have three more jotted down. Space Marine 2. 75 over or under. I couldn't pull up the Metacritic for the first one, but I checked uh IGN GameSpot Game Informer. It's right around that like high seven, low eight range for pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's my bias. This is my time to be biased. I, I want it to be like low eighties at least coming in. And I think it will get received well because look, man, it's been so long since we had a Gears game and stuff like that, and something of that ilk. Like people are itching for them. Just action, third person. Like the, the new God of War did really well and stuff like that. And this is going to be visceral combat. So yeah, like eighty three. I hope minimum. I'm going. I'm going with you. I'm going over somewhere high sevens, low eights. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Alone in the dark. I have a seventy one. Over or under a seventy one. Ever so slightly over. I don't. I don't think it's going to be a good game. No stand by that. It really just doesn't look good. <laughs> I'm gonna go with you though. I'm gonna go over. That might be hope, hope, optimism, but um, I don't know. I mean, it's but, gotta uh, be better than Marvel Avengers. Come on. That's a damn good point. <laughs> that is a damn good point, my friend. Last one that I have down. We know this game isn't gonna come out, but I have Dragon Age Dreadwolf. And I have an 86. Inquisition was an 88. Over or under an 86. Oh. You, what was Andromeda quickly? Sorry. I guess. Because Inquisition came out in a year where it was completely dead. It was such a barren year. It won Game of the Year, I believe, as well. Which, look, man, I'm a really big Dragon Age fan. 
in a normal year, that wouldn't have come anywhere near winning game of the year. Yeah. Hold on one second. I just fucked up. Mass Effect. So, uh... 72. <laughs> And I know that's obviously not their main studio. They went and obviously made Anthem, and that was like their B team. But it, it it's worrying with the because every single release that they've gone from Origins that was extremely good, and then Dragon Age Two pissed people off because it was like, what the hell is this? And then Dragon Age Inquisition, it was like, uh, okay, sure. Uh, I think eighty six. That's the that's nah, the thing. It's Inquisition. Not, it's not hitting it. It's not hitting okay. it. Okay. Under. I want it to hit it, of course. I'd, I I'd wish it was a ninety five. But you know what? It ain't happening. I, I'm going over. I'm gonna throw out my, my, my hope my last Hail Mary hopeful pick here. And once again, this is a similar thing to Star Wars Outlaws. We know this thing isn't coming out, so it it, it is what it is. I don't see any world where Dragon Age Dreadwolf comes out in 2024. But if we have to lock it in right now at an 86 over or under, I'm going in. I'm going over, being hopeful. Damn Absolutely. it, man. I want that game to be good. Yeah, so do I, man. So do I. Come on, by oh, the way. Get back on the track. I'm telling you, brother. That was fun as hell, man. I appreciate yeah. you uh, indulging me in my stupid game. <laughs> no, that was great. Absolutely. Shit, yeah. So yeah, that was obviously the direct and the little higher or lower. Higher or lower? Yeah. Higher or lower. <laughs> hey, I can I, I I love the this style of stuff, the little games, throwing little games into the mix. That's like my favorite thing in the world. So I'll, I'll definitely and, and let us know in the comments, man. You know, if y'all enjoyed yep. this type of stuff, little games added in, little kind of just fun bits and bobs here and there. Let us know and we'll we'll definitely keep on making it. Making it happen, Captain. Yeah, absolutely. So this is obviously here for us to first and foremost have fun, like I said, to begin with. Um, it's obviously a lot slower of a, a form of content. A lot of people would prefer like bite-sized stuff, but the, I've, to be honest, it's more for us, I think, <laughs> to enjoy yeah, this well, and I got to tell you, dude, I, I appreciate you wanting to do this and having me on because it does, it definitely reinvigorates me. Like it gets me active and motivated to keep up with the news and, and try to stay engaged as much as possible. So, because I, this, this type of stuff back and forth, talking games with somebody who's really passionate about games, that is like a fulfilling experience, regardless if we ever make a penny or we ever get a subscriber like yeah. just being able to shoot the shit with someone who who enjoys games i would say more than i do but at least on a on a similar playing field we we you know can kind of bounce back and forth pretty easily yeah it's it's very yeah, much a place, a, a, yeah to vocalize all that there's you know we store all this knowledge it's best to put it somewhere make use right. of it <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, dude, it'd be really fun, you know, when we get when we're playing Avowed or Hellblade or whatever, to have like an entire hour, two hour long discussion about just an individual game. If we really, because we can kind of mm. do whatever the hell we want with the format, you know, yeah, yeah. just to go in and and break things down on a more granular granular level, that'd be super fun. Yeah, no, I'm I'm absolutely down for that with Avowed, with me being so passionate about Pillars of Eternity. Right, I have a yeah. lot to say about that game. Well. <laughs> And it's the funny thing too is like how we're so different in terms of our Xbox experience. There, that kind of carries over into a lot of different facets as well. Where you you'll be coming at the uh, avowed from a Pillars fan, I'll be coming at it from a Fresh fan perspective. In the same way that with Xbox, I'm a Fresh fan, you're a long term fan. So, yeah, man, yeah, it, it, I, this is it, it is a really good dynamic. It's not one that you see often in podcasts in general. Like if there's an Xbox centric podcast. Usually the people have been in that ecosystem heavily for a long time and then, which is great, you know, getting a, a wealth of knowledge, but you don't really see this kind of long-term OG veteran. Yeah, so and then there's the, only the a rookie. small amount of us fanboys left. We've got to stick together. That's why <laughs> <laughs> they're all driven off that. with that damn connect. Hey, I, I feel that. I feel that, man. So, yeah, I guess that's where we wrap it up. Um, that was episode two. Um, hopefully it won't be long until episode three. Yeah, dude. I love doing this. So you hit me up and I'll hop on, my brother. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate you guys. Peace. <laughs>